New materials, manufacturing, and even AI has allowed us to reach into a new realm of engineering. This equates into new engines, which can finally emerge from concept to reality. This includes the RDE, otherwise known as a rotating detonation engine. This generates thrust using a supersonic combustion phenomenon known as detonation. An RDE can be used for many applications, and it can be more efficient than a typical rocket engine. However, it's still only one piece of the puzzle, and whether or not you're just using an RDE, or a full flow stage combustion cycle, you still need to control the exhaust. Most liquid fuel rockets use a bell-shaped nozzle to direct thrust. As the rocket climbs higher and higher, exhaust starts to travel outside of its main trajectory, and this expansion outside the bell decreases the efficiency of the rocket. We have known for many years that the bell design is simply not efficient at all altitudes. This partially attributes to why we see multi-stage rockets, where one engine, such as the F1, is built for pressures near sea level, and an upper stage like a J2 is made for higher altitudes or a vacuum. And the best option to this, well, at least on paper, is to introduce a wedge-shaped protrusion or a spike. It's very efficient at low altitude because the atmospheric pressure restricts the expansion of the exhaust gas. And this avoids the creation of a partial vacuum that would reduce thrust. But at high altitudes, air pressure decreases, reducing weight compression. In other words, an oil spike is very good at adjusting to the altitude of the rocket. And it's more efficient than a typical bell design. But there's a reason why we have not been using the aerospike spike in the last half century. And that is because they are very tricky to design. With the gas being expanded against the nozzle wall, the aerospike spike undergoes a lot of extreme heat. And you need extra cooling to keep this all together. The main solution is to come up with a really good alloy which can withstand this heat, but also be lightweight as well. It also depends on the shape of the aerospike spike you're going for. One infamous design is the linear aerospike, spike, and this was introduced for the Venture Star concept the one that was supposed to replace the space shuttle. It's pretty futuristic looking, with two straight parallel ramps that can hold multiple thrusters. However, this program was abruptly ended when it was decided to use composite materials for the hydrogen tank, and this led to failure during testing. Funny it abruptly ended, but I still really like the potential of the linear aerospike spike because it can be utilized in a single stage to orbit vehicle and have thrust vectoring at the same time. It's a very fascinating design, but it's very problematic to pursue economically. The multiple engine integration just doesn't add up for most lighter payload delivery rockets, so unfortunately, we will probably not see the linear aerospike spike for some time. Having said all that, there are some companies which seem to sell the idea from time to time, but nothing has come to fruition just yet. Another infamous design is the Toriadol spike. And this is a little bit easier to scale because it can be incorporated in a single rocket engine configuration. So quite a few smaller companies are pursuing this including Pangea Aerospace. Similar to the development of RDEs, they are utilizing additive manufacturing along with a newly developed copper alloy. This is a new high strength alloy developed by NASA and it's able to undergo 10 reuses with up to 15% more efficiency when compared to a conventional rocket engine. But this engine is also unique in the fact that it has small channels where the fuel is fed through before being injected into the main combustion chamber. The spiral shape of these channels forces coolant against the walls via centrifugal action. As of right now, they have tested a 20 kN Demo P1, but they are working towards a very large 300 kN orbital rocket. Next generation modeling, new alloys, and additive manufacturing have brought forth new aerospike variants. However, a new technological emergence is taking place right now, and this will take engine design even one step further. With the combination of CAD algorithms and the Titan core processor, a dramatic design was created, sliced, and hatched within mere minutes. With an EOS metal printer, the creation was made only in a couple of days. The chambers can now be designed with a Mach number distribution and calculated through flow conditions. In other words, this engine was designed beyond human imagination or capability. Ultimately, this emerging technology will not immediately displace a Raptor or an RS-25 because it does not have the proven economics or reliability. Not to mention that it actually needs to be tested. But I truly believe we are looking at something unique here. 
because algorithmic engineering can dramatically change how we even build engines. It can be used in anything from rotating detonation to aerial spikes, leading to a new frontier of space propulsion. Or maybe AI will just destroy us all in the end. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.